All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Why are we on that angle? What's that angle up there? What is? Yeah, but it will change, I think. Are, are we? Are we? We on? All right, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Free Smoke Friday. Uh, slight little technical difficulty, but we are back. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, tired, um, I've been doing a lot lately, and I guess my, my, my question for myself is, um, is it all worth it? Which I think everybody needs to answer that for themselves. Is it all worth it? The stuff that you're going to go through, the things you got to deal with, being able to manage entrepreneurship, it is hard. I don't, I don't. I don't know what type of picture people have been painting of uh, what entrepreneurship is and what it's supposed to be. And is it going to be as uh, glamorous as you see it in your head? And I'm telling you, it's not. If you are an entrepreneur and you are on the verge of quitting, just do it now. Just do it now. You don't deserve this abuse. Now, I'm saying that to say, um, the people who, once you get a little bit of pressure, you think about quitting, just quit now because you're going to quit later anyway. But if you have the fortitude to keep going after it and you see the vision ahead of you, you just have to keep going if you can see it. Now, I think there's a lot of people that are playing entrepreneurship. You're just playing. This is not something that you... Um, you really, really want to do. You saw somebody else do it, and you thought it was cool, and now you're involved in it. You keep putting yourself through some pressure that you don't really need to go through when really you got to figure out another way to live to be happy. Now, I am doing all this complaining and saying I'm tired and I've done a lot, and it, it weighs a lot on me mentally. But for me, I wouldn't have it any other way, and I've been doing it for so long. If you desire to live a good life, a good life is not only through entrepreneurship. You really have to identify what makes you happy, what makes you tick. There are, uh, if, if I was, I don't think I would ever, I don't know if I would ever be just full-fledged employee because that's not who I am. But I would have to do something that allows me to grow doing the same thing. Based on my ability to do it better, I should be comp compensated more. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I don't know if I could, like let's say being, I, I know I couldn't be a server or um, even a manager at a restaurant forever. Because it's, it's, it's too much of the same thing and I couldn't really get above a better, another point. If I wasn't, if I didn't have the, the fortitude to be an, be an entrepreneur, what I would probably do is find an entrepreneur that I like and I work for that person and I come up with a bunch of opportunities where I can add to the thing that the person built already. Add to the thing that they built where I can be... Um, I can be more compensated based on my efforts. So that's probably how I would approach it. But for me, I probably wouldn't have it any other way because I actually, truly love the game. The ups, the downs, the goods, the bads. Just because you're having a, uh, a tough time, let's say, in your marriage, it doesn't mean you want to not be married. It's just you get through it, and you know you are meant for this. You are built for this. You can do this. Marriage, obviously, is probably the best personal development that anybody can go through because now you have to share a space with another human being, and you have to give of yourself, and you got to be considerate. So I wouldn't have it any other way. I am a married type of person. I love being married. I love being a father. Um but I am blessed because I've been able to design the life that I want. 
I'm telling you that because you too can design the life that you want. But you have to be intentional about it. So um, I want to have a conversation real quick. Nella, how was your week? And were you designing the life that you want this week? Uh, great morning. Um, my week, in the beginning, it was rough. I had a rough start to the week. But I am designing the life that I want and that I see for myself, for us, and for baby girl. What does that, what does that design look like? Um, so that design looks like, um, freedom. So this week we had baby girl has been not, has been acting up in school a little bit. And so being able to have the freedom to move as soon as the school calls me and do a mom pop up like they used to do back in the day, mm -hmm. <laughs> being able to do that and being able to be present in her life is, in t is beyond important to me. Um, and also being able to create financially the, the income that we want. Good, good, good. J-Star, how was your week? Man, my week was great, man. Um, like I told you, I was in a, a country wedding skit so that, you know, I moved down here for music and for acting. So mm -hmm. to be able to have my first, uh, thing happen for it to be country wedding is fire. Good, good, good. Okay. Lean back. Stop leaning. Oh, stop leaning back. My bad. I'm, I'm, <laughs> my bad. My bad. So yeah, it's good. Um, done some music that uh, the challenge that you put me up to. So good. Yeah, I'm good, man. How many did we write this week? We did six. Ooh. We wrote six, but um, five, five videos, five visuals, and that's only because I had to get my Rajshad Confessionals podcast edited and put out on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then I had the Country Wayne thing on Friday. So. Good, good. Okay. All right. You were designing your life this week? Man, listen. That's what we're here for, man. We ain't coming to play. I love it. I love it. Okay. All right. So um, we're about to get into this conversation. But if you will, throw it in the chat. And this, may, this isn't just a comment. This isn't an emoji. Um, what I'd like to know is what does that life look like for you? What is If you had to design your life, if you could put it on paper, what does it look like? I am happily married with children, three kids. I make this amount of money. This is the amount that I work. This is how much I travel. This is what my home looks like. This is what I do for my family. I take X amount of trips per year. These are the amount I take with my spouse. This is the amount I take with my family, and we talk about extended family. My mom, my dad, my uh, we do a, like a, a family retreat. What does this life look like? If you can't see it, you won't be able to say it, and if you can't see it or say it, you won't be able to have it. I think there's a lot of people that can say it, but they can't see it. They could, they could say this is what I want, but they can't really see it. So much so that well, if I talk about it, but I ask you to do an assignment like this, because you don't see it, you can't really write it down. You don't know what it looks like. And maybe there's a mental block of you saying to yourself, I don't think this is really possible. It's easy for me to say it because I've been lying my whole life. It's easy for me to lie. I can lie about stuff. But I can't see it. So what I want you to do, if you can, I want you to try to see it for a second. Can you, can you see it? Easy to say it. Y'all want this type of car and this type of boat, and I want to live here, but I need you to have a visual in your head of what it looks like. But if you can't do either one of those, you can't have it. I saw a lot of what I'm doing before I started doing it. And the vision that I have now, I see certain things now, and I know it's going to come to fruition because I see it. And not only seeing it and saying it, there's a step in between that and having it because you have to now put a plan together to go get it. You are not going to just simply attract the life that you've designed in your head. It doesn't come to you. It doesn't hit you like a ton of bricks. You've got to go get some of those things. 
I see myself having sponsorships for all my events. Well, if I don't make the calls, if I don't make the plans, if I don't have strategic partnerships, how am I going to do it? I won't magically get a phone call of someone that says, hey, we're going to give you 30 sponsorships. We got to do some work. We have to do some work. This is, this is what I subscribe to. But today, we are going to talk about the life cycle of a good idea. If you are an entrepreneur, I need y'all to share this out with five people. Share this out with five people. Comment done, because this may be the most important message that you ever hear in your life as an entrepreneur. If you are stuck as an entrepreneur, if you can't seem to get to that next level, if you can't seem to stop starting and stop, you can't seem to stop quitting stuff. This will be the most important message that you ever hear as an entrepreneur. This time is now. I need you to share this out with five people. Send it to five people. Comment done when it's done. This is going to be important. This is going to be important. I don't know everybody that's watching this, but I guarantee you, I'm going to describe your journey to the T. I'm going to describe your, your, your failed attempts at entrepreneurship perfectly because I understand this stuff. Man, let's jump into this thing, man. So let us, uh, we have the musical stylings of my brother Jay Star in the village. Jay Star, what's up, man? You been working, huh? Hey man, I told them here for a reason, man. Yes, you know sir. Yes, sir. We got that new intro today. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Long awaited. So let's, let's do let's it. Let's hear the intro, man. I, I, I need these bars. Let's get to it. Yo, 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 yo. J Star. Look, I ain't learned about no money when I was growing up. School ain't teach about no credit when I was growing up. Had to learn it for myself, so you know how that went. Had to repull on my credit for I knew what it meant. All they said was go to school and get the education. Go to college, get the degree, there'll be a job waiting. Only problem is I did and there was nothing waiting. I said you heard the same lie, who they think they playing with. I'm just saying is you better do better. When it come to my cheddar, you can think it's a game. Best believe I'm a good job. Giving all this free smoke, you gon' need some fresh air, bro. When it come to these shows, there ain't another comparable. Easy. Tune in live, you can get your whole crew blessed. Giving out the right game so you don't go left. When we going live, we give it all out. If they ain't talking, what we talking? What we talking about? <laughs> Ooh, J Star. <laughs> I like that. You know I'm super honest, so if I ain't like it, I just said I wouldn't like it. But I like that. Hey man, I tried to tell you, you know? It's all good. Oh my bad, my bad. Oh, you good? You good? Hey, listen, no, no, calm man. Down. <laughs> so what you think? Because the question was, did I like it better than first? Yes. I like both, but I like, I like this one better too. You do? Yeah, it's it's more context. It's uh, you just put, you put more into it, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you put more. Hey, run that back real run quick. Back. <laughs> but you can turn it. You can turn it up as loud as you want in here, right? Because they won't yeah, give me feedback. But turn it up a little more. Let's run that back real right, quick, let's, man. Let's Make sure y'all follow my boy J Star. <laughs> Intro's crazy. I like it. J Star. Look. I ain't learn about no money when I was growing up. School ain't teach about no credit when I was growing up. Had to learn it for myself, so you know how that went. Had to repull on my credit for I knew what it meant. All they said was go to school and get the education. Go to college, get the degree, there'll be a job waiting. Only problem is I did and there was nothing waiting. I said you heard the same lie, who they think they playing with. I'm just saying is you better do better. When it come to my cheddar, you can think it's a game. Best believe I'm a good job. Giving all this free smoke, you gon' need some fresh air, bro. When they come to these shows, there ain't another comparable. Be easy. Tune in live, you can get your whole crew blessed. Giving out the right game so you don't go left. When we going live, we give it all out. If they ain't talking, what we talking, what we talking about?
you've been through this and you understand it. So again, I haven't, I don't, I don't know all who was, you said no sound. It's on, okay. Um, we, the, the, if you are an entrepreneur, you've been through this, especially if you had some failed attempts. Do me a favor, throw it in the chat. If, um, if you're not where you want to be right now, but you've been trying for a while, throw a me in the chat. If, if you are not where you want to be, but you've been trying for a while, you know it's coming. You know it's coming. But you've been trying for a while and it just hasn't seemed to hit yet. It's coming. But it, it just hasn't hit yet. Just throw a me in the chat. Okay. There are there's strategies to get you out of that mud. And we're gonna go through them today. And what I want you to understand is that it's not your fault because you haven't had this conversation yet or you haven't been able to see yourself and what you've been going through. So here we go. Here's the life cycle of a good idea. And I will give you the answers to the problem. First, let me describe the problem. Here's what happens. Number one, you get excited about the idea. Am I right? How many people have really gotten excited about an idea? Throw it in the chat. You've gotten really excited. This is so groundbreaking. You've had a groundbreaking concept as an entrepreneur. And you got so excited because you're thinking, I can't believe I don't know anybody that's doing this idea that I have in my head. I am excited. Somebody put excitement in the chat. Somebody put the word excitement. Now, some people don't get to this point. You have an idea, but you don't get excited enough to do anything. This is a necessary part of this process. Throw excitement in the chat. This is, this is a necessary part of the process. You have to get excited about it. If you don't get excited, who's going to get excited? It's the excitement that pushes you to the next stages of this, this cycle. You've got to get excited. So how do we get excited? There has to be something internally where you start to see this vision bigger than life. It's huge. This thing is going to change not only the world, which is second important, your whole life, which is more important than anybody else. This thing is going to change your legacy, your lineage. You are going to be the first person in your family to become a multimillionaire, but you got to get excited. Now, the reason some people don't get excited is because of all the past hurt, the past trauma, the past experiences, all the people that's telling you that you won't win. So this is just another idea, but you've, you've told yourself that we're not going to get too excited because I'm only going to let myself down again. Or this idea that I got, I remember getting excited about something and every time I get excited, it doesn't work out. I remember a friend of mine telling me, now I'm excited about this idea and I'm trying to recruit him to do this business with me. This is my friend, best friend in the world. His name's Brandon, he's a nut. But that's my boy, he's my best friend in the whole world. He told me one time, he said, bro, you get excited about everything. I'm excited about yet another business idea. But he said, yo, you be excited about everything. What about, what, what about the last three or four you were excited about, those didn't work out. I remember him saying that. And it kind of impeded my progress too because I didn't want to get too excited because he reminded me that other people are gonna remember all the last stuff that I got excited about that didn't work out. So I started to tread lightly. It killed me. I remember. Anybody in that space? You've been trying to get after this thing, but you're always excited about this new idea. But you're reluctant to get excited again because you don't want other people to look at you the same way and say, well, you've been trying. Like, you're always doing, so you're always doing something. You're always excited about something. Always doing something. That is a, that is a challenge, y'all. So, I don't want you to not be excited. We have to get past that. We got to get excited about something. Well, the next phase 
Number two is evolution. So after you get excited about something, I know you, I know you. You get excited about an idea, but then we got to start to evolve the concept. We have to start putting together the perfect title, the name, the branding, the colors, the strategy, what we are going to do. Like if we got to get it developed, we got to write the book, we got to structure it. We have to evolve the idea that we're excited about. No problem, right? Because you can't just be excited forever. You got to do some work. We got to do the admin stuff. We got to get the back end together. We got to get the website right. We got to get the copy. How are we going to approach the market? Now, the people that are in this uh, evolution phase are typically still excited. The only problem with the evolution phase is we stay there too long. We stay in evolution too long because we don't want to go to the next phase because the next phase is engagement. We have to engage the audience with the thing that we've evolved over the last six months, six weeks, year. And that's why people stay in the evolution phase because I, I got to go talk to people. I got to go sell it. I got to go talk to other humans about this idea. I am terrified because evolution phase feels good. There is a reason why I haven't made millions. Why? Because I'm involved in the idea. I just, I just started. It's not ready yet, which is the excuse that we use. But if you go to engagement, now it gives fuel to the fire of why this thing isn't working because you've been in the market, but we don't want to go there. We want to be in evolution for as long as possible. We will read the website, copy the words on the website a thousand times and it will never be right. And we always gotta tweak it and we always gotta fix it. There's always going to be something wrong with the launch because we don't wanna go to the next phase of engagement. We don't wanna do that. We're excited. We evolved the idea, this is the cool part. But then we gotta engage people. We have to go out in the streets and ask people to buy. Here's why this is the worst phase of this because now people can take us to the next step when we start getting uh, resistance. Well, in engagement, we, we, we feel this resistance. Now, that's not going to be the next step. It's just engagement and we feel resistance. We get some reception. Some people like it, some people don't. The people that like it keep us excited. The people who resist us, it starts to it, it starts to play on our mental. You know what's crazy? Thank you, Noah. We can have a hundred yeses. That one no from that one person that we respect. It makes you want to throw in the towel and quit the whole thing because there was a couple people that in our inner circle wasn't feeling it. I, I've seen if I've seen it once, I've seen it a thousand times. They say stuff like, man, people ain't buying. Who are the people? People ain't feeling it. People don't like it. People said that my packaging is wrong and the people are typically one or two people. This is why this engagement phase is so dangerous. This is the breaking point. We get excited, we evolve the idea, we engage the audience, and now, after some resistance, we feel reluctance. Reluctance. We're reluctant to keep going because of all the things that we've experienced in the engagement phase. Listen, if I'm talking to you, just throw a that's me in the chat. Come on, somebody, if I'm talking to you, come on, I ain't gonna get too many amens on that one. <laughs> somebody talk to me. If I'm talking to you, just throw a that's me in the chat. Just honest, I, I need to know. I need to know who I'm talking to. We, we get reluctant to even pro proceed with the business because look at all look at all the resistance that we're getting in this engagement phase. 
we're reluctant. We already talked to the people that are our friends and family and our inner circle. We've exhausted that market. So where do we go now? I am reluctant to move forward. Depending on how long you've been engaging people, one of the excuses or the things that go on in your head is, I'm, I've, been, I've been doing it for a while and I just can't figure it out. And then after we dwell in this reluctance phase for a little while, after we dwell in this reluctance phase for a little while, we go to the final stage, which is decision. We now have to make a decision. Do we decide to move forward? What The decision that we should make right now is you should decide to move forward. You should just go. You have to fight past all, you gotta like fight through all this stuff and just keep moving forward. That should be the decision. But that's typically not the decision. The decision that we make is we decide to get excited about something else. There's something else shiny that we get excited about. So we're excited about this new thing. The old thing that we were just doing, that didn't work out, but this, this, new, this new idea? Oh, I am flat out excited. This is the one. This is the one. I am excited. And then you start evolving that other thing. And then you have to take that thing that you evolved and start engaging the market with it. And then through engagement, you got some goods, you got some bads, you got some yeses, you got some noes. And then we start feeling reluctant based on the response. And then we make another decision to either move forward or what typically happens is we make a decision to get excited about something else. Start evolving something else, engaging the audience with something else. We start to get these feelings of reluctancy to move forward. We make a decision to get excited about something else. And that new thing we're excited about, we start to evolve. You have been doing that for the last 15 years. Am I right? Anybody? Okay, maybe I'm not talking, maybe, maybe I'm talking to just super entrepreneurs where you've just been locked into the same thing and you are not going to quit and you just keep going. But listen, this was my, this was my life for a very long time. Can somebody throw, a, can somebody throw a me in the chat if that was, that was you up until today? Okay. I just need to, I just need to know that we can have a transparent conversation right now. Hey, listen, if you are on Instagram, I need you to run on over to YouTube right now. Go on to YouTube right now. Real social, Go to Social Proof Podcast. I am live on Social Proof Podcast because I am going to start taking callers and I am going to help you. We are going to fix your life tonight, this afternoon, today, whenever you listen to this. So I... I I, I need you to come on over to YouTube because you are going to be able to join this conversation because we're going to po post a link in the chat where you can join it. And I want to hear your story. But before I do that, we are going to, I'm going to tell you the secret. There is a hack to this thing. There's a way that you can keep moving forward. Okay. So uh, we're about to shut this down on Instagram. Instagram, I need you to come on over. I did post it in my stories, the link. So you can go to YouTube, type in Social Proof Podcast. You will see us live. Join the conversation. All right? Well, let's get to it. Okay, we can shut this Instagram down. Woo! Nella, what's up? What's up? What's up? How are you? I am blessed, man. What you thinking? I am thinking. Okay, there we go. I am thinking a lot of people deal with this, yeah. this issue. And a lot of times I feel like, I've I've been I've personally been an entrepreneur since I was about sixteen years old, mm -hmm. um, and I I know I have stopped after the excitement yep. phase in the. Now you don't even get the evolution, golly! I didn't even get to some ideas because I I mean I've had that, but that's when you start to surround yourself with yep. 
with people who can keep you on track. For sure. And keep you going. But before we get into that conversation, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Free Smoke Friday. How are you guys doing? Drop a good or something in the chat if you guys are doing amazing. It's Friday. And of course, you already know, I got to give you guys the house rules. All right. First and foremost, I am your hostess with the most is Nella. And y'all in my house now. So you got to abide by the rules. If you love the information that you are hearing today or have heard so far, make sure you go go ahead and share this live with three of your friends because somebody's going to need to hear this conversation. I'm sure you already thought about 10 people right now. All right. So go ahead, share this live with, with three of your friends. That's all I'm giving you. Just three. And then make sure you hit that like button. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just a quick, you know, trigger finger. Like, real quick. You don't even got to double tap. All right? And then, lastly, but surely not least, like I said already, if you are loving this information, drop a super chat for us. Well, it's not for us. It's for, <laughs> it's for, <laughs> J-Star said do it for the kids. It's for the children of the inner city. Dave and all his friends is going around the inner cities and they are helping young adults to be able to fulfill their dreams in their entrepreneurial endeavors. So what you drop in those super chats, help them to do that. All right. But we're going to go ahead and get in this conversation. And I want to see in the chat, what stage are you currently at that you're struggling with? Let's and hop on live so Dave can help you out. Let's get it. Let's get it. So here's the cycle, okay? I'm going to give it to you one more time. Okay. Excitement, one. Two, engagement. Three, evolution. Four, reluctance. Five, decision. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Keith Sean. Thanks for keeping me going every Friday. Hey, listen, if this is valuable to you, we definitely want to uh, show, show us some love. Kaya Michelle, this show is called David Fix My Life Today. <laughs> I got your back. I got your back, okay? So the fix, very simple, very simple. And uh, we will drop the link, and maybe we could pin, let's pin the link, actually. Um, we are going to pin the link so that you can join the conversation, because I want to assist you. I want to help you. Um, here's what I found, what works. And take this note, because it's going to be super valuable. You have to take the previous stages with you. I will explain it in a minute. It may not make sense right now, but you have to take the previous stages with you. Here's what I mean. The life cycle of a good idea as an entrepreneur, we get excited about something. After we get excited about it, we have to evolve the idea. But as you're evolving the idea, you have to continue to remain excited. As you're evolving the idea, you have to remember to stay excited. Even in the evolution phase of evolving whatever the concept is, it can be disheartening because you're starting to find out stuff that you didn't know. When we start an idea and we're excited about it, it there's no obstacles. There's no barriers. We think, yo, this is a no-brainer. Everyone's going to love it. But then you start getting into the market and you start realizing, whoa, there are competitors. There are issues with bringing this thing to life. There's a, there's a concept. You found the perfect name. And once you start evolving the idea, you realize you can't trademark it. Somebody else has it. Or somebody has some sort of variation. It's too close to your concept. So now we got to come up with another idea. And the name may be the biggest part about the business. But you have to remember through all of these uh, uh, disappointments, all these frustrations, you can't find the right manufacturer. You're talking to some people in China and it just seems scammy. So you're nervous and you don't know it's too expensive to get it in the States. Listen, I am writing a children's book. Well, it's, it's done. But in the evolution of it, 
we're realizing, okay, some of the stories don't connect. Some of it don't make sense. And then we got to go through the process of the editing. And now I got to figure out, okay, how am I going to, how am I going to package it? How am I going to package this thing? I, okay, here's the thing. We wrote 10 stories, seven of them are done. I'm going to take four of them. But this took me a little long, a little longer to figure out. Cause at first I'm like, yo, I'm going to sell a book with 10 stories in it. And then I start coming through this, like, how am I going to conceptualize the process of selling it? And then what type of books? The pages, the pages were created in a format that's not a typical book, the sizing. Now I have to take almost 80 slides and reformat them. This, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm talking about before we get to the market. We have to keep evolving this concept, but we have to remember to stay excited. How do we stay excited? We have to remember the vision. The vision is the only thing that keeps us excited. Jesus had disciples. And the disciples are going through a lot. Imagine this. They're telling people about this Messiah. But the people don't believe it. The large majority don't believe it. But they're starting to tell people. And because of their faith, they got lashes, they got ridiculed, they got stoned, they got abused, they got thrown in jail. But Jesus kept telling these stories, man, about these streets of gold, and about his father's house, and about happiness, the many mansions. He kept telling the story. He kept telling the story, painting the picture that one day it's not going to be like this. But he did prepare them. Now I'm trying to prepare you. He did prepare you. Listen, they are going to treat you this way because of me. So you can keep believing in me. Keep telling people about me. But as you do, there, you're, there, there are many nasty roads ahead, I'm telling you. I'm preparing you for this. But if, 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 somebody throw if in the chat. If, if you can stay focused on this vision, if you can get through all of this, on the other side of the persecution, there's an unexpressible joy that you're going to feel unexplainable. I can't even properly paint the picture of what your life is going to be like in this kingdom. But we had to, as, as we're shaping this message, we have to stay excited. The way we stay excited is remembering the vision and how do we remember the vision? We got to keep it in front of us. You need to have a vision board in your office or at your house. You need to have it on your screensaver, what this thing looks like. You need to, you, you have to keep the vision in front of you. Otherwise you'll stop deading your tracks in this evolution phase. So Nella was just talking about it. She was like, yo, I break down in evolution. I get excited. But the work, before we even take it to the market, is too much. I've been there. This isn't just Nella. It's not me. It's not just you. All of us go through this. But I'm trying to get you past this one phase. You, it's going to take a second. It's going to take time. It's going to take patience to get past the evolution of a good idea. But you got to stay excited. Next is engagement. You have to engage the audience and take it to the market. See if people like it. Make the sale. Ask people for money. But the way we keep moving forward is we have to stay excited even in the engagement phase regardless of their answer. You got, ex I'm, listen, this is going to be rough. The people that, that saw you working on this idea are some of the closest people to you. And the closest people to you are going to tell you, as soon as you get this idea ready, let me know. 
As soon as the product is ready, let me know. I'm going to buy. I am going to support you. And then they don't. Right? That ever happened to y'all? You'll be working on something, and it seems like the people around you are just as excited as you, but when it comes time for you to engage them and ask them for the sale and them give you money, there's a stutter step, there's a hesitation, and it means more because you are for sure, if though nobody in the world supports you, your friends and family would, your inner circle would, it will kill your excitement. But you have to consciously, consciously remember to stay excited as you're engaging the marketplace with your product or service. You have to stay excited. However, you also have to keep evolving the idea as you're engaging the market. What does that look like? We can take, we can take that off the screen, Ella. What does that look like? When someone tells you no, you have to ask them why. Somebody throw why in the chat. Somebody throw a why in the chat. You ask them to buy. They say, no, not right now. Your next question is why. Why aren't you buying this? That's a good question, actually. Now, why pop quiz? J-Star. Why, when someone says no to me, when I ask them, why are they saying no to me? Why? I don't know. We Let's talking pretend about, that you didn't know. You said, why are they saying no to you? You say, I'm not going to buy it right now. Mm. And I say, well, why are you not going to buy it right now? I may say. Why am I saying that to you? Oh, why are you saying it? Why aren't you going to buy it right now? Correct. Because Are you expecting me to buy it because I'm your friend? Maybe. You're assuming that I was going to buy it because I... Said your idea was great. Okay. Okay. Right. I think that's our problem. Sometimes we assume or expect our closest people to mm -hmm. to be there. Right. Always. I got this line where I say, um, "Everybody screams support until it's time to support." Yep. Right. So it's support me, support me. And then when you, when it's time to support, nobody's supporting. That's real. So, but that's not the reason why I'm asking why. The reason. I'm asking you, why are you not buying? Is because I'm still currently evolving the idea. And if you give me a good reason why you haven't bought, I can go back into the lab, fix that, buy this t-shirt. Nah, I'm cool. Well, why aren't you buying the t-shirt? I mean, I mean, the t-shirt is cool, but it's not, it's not the dopest shirt I've ever seen in my life. Oh, so I need to get stronger on my designs. If enough people tell me that I don't have strong designs, guess what I'm going to go do, J-Star? I'm going to go work on getting stronger designs. For sure. Why am I going to work on getting stronger designs even when I'm engaging the audience with this perfect product? Because I'm still evolving the idea. We got to keep evolving. The issue is, once we take this perfect product in our head to the market and people aren't buying, we start to assume that something is wrong with them because this product is perfect when there's something maybe wrong with the product, maybe something wrong with your packaging, maybe something wrong with your pricing, maybe something wrong with your delivery. As long as when you're engaging people, you're trying to figure out why people aren't buying, you will continue to grow and evolve the idea and then you're like, oh, I figured it out, and guess what? You will remain excited because their answer won't control your emotions, yes or no. Whether they buy it or not, that won't take you out the game. If they don't buy it, you get excited because you figured out a way or a reason why people aren't buying, and now you're excited because you can go back in the lab, retool it, come back and engage the people and say, I fixed it, would you buy now? I wish there were 2 million people on this live to understand what I'm saying. And I hope this video gets 2 million views because there are entrepreneurs who, if they, if they simply understood this concept, 
they would be, uh, oh my gosh, so much further ahead. I've studied entrepreneurship. I've been an entrepreneur for a very long time. I've coached entrepreneurs for a very long time. This is the only reason I understand this stuff. Hey, listen, man, if we, if we talking good, give a little super chat to the kids, okay? Because I want to continue to invest in youth entrepreneurs. Go on, drop a little super chat if I, if I helped you. Now, when you drop a super chat, the money does not go to my pocket. It goes to our youth initiative of helping entrepreneurial kids, okay? We're investing in, in youth businesses, okay? I have a nonprofit called Entrepreneurship Foundation. So we take the money and we put it there, okay? Here we go. Here we go. The next phase is reluctancy. So based on the answers that we receive, we are undoubtedly going to get, get through this process. We're going to go through the emotions of reluctancy of should I keep going? Joya Bean. Appreciate the love. Joya Bean. I rock some me some Joya Bean. Mm -hmm. Make sure y'all follow Joya Bean. Hey, and when you give uh, when you give a super chat, put your Instagram name in there uh, so that other people can follow you. Throw it in the little comment section, man. Joy of being been showing love for a very, very long time. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Whew. You are going to get these feelings of reluctancy. This the, the enemy will creep into your mind and tell you all of the reasons why you shouldn't do this and why you shouldn't keep moving forward. You will be reluctant. To move forward. I don't want you to be reluctant. So the only way we, 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 we move past this phase is we have to keep engaging. Remember, no matter what their answer is, once you start feeling the feelings of I don't want to keep moving forward, that should be a trigger for you to go ask someone else to buy your product or service. When you don't feel like it, that should be a reminder to go ask somebody else today. I want that to be a trigger for you. Is anybody in that phase right now? You just, you're starting to feel this reluctance. You just, it's not as, uh, it's not as brilliant of an idea as I thought it was going to be. I just knew this thing was going to be amazing. I knew it. But now I see all the things going wrong. All the people telling me they're not going to buy. I'm not making any money. It could be your spouse that's saying, all right, now, you've been doing this thing, spending hours every single week for the last six months to a year. I'm, it's, it's about time you go get a job. It's about time you start spending more time with me because I'm not seeing the fruits of it. You keep working on this thing and you keep going out and I'm now starting to feel like you're cheating on me. Because you're going out this whole time and you ain't bringing no money back. What are we doing? Hey, listen, we could not make no money together. So what are we doing? All of these things will play on your mental or even as you're a content creator, you're engaging the audience with this amazing idea. You start to feel the reluctancy because of the comment section. I talked to a, a content creator yesterday like, yo, I'm doing some I'm doing some amazing stuff, man. And I am I, I, it's a controversial topic. But them comments of people disagreeing with me, my gosh, shouts out to the at bounce underscore house underscore brothers. Go show some love to Christopher Rendon. Christopher, we appreciate the love, man. Appreciate the support, family. You're starting to feel this reluctancy. But this should be the trigger for you to keep going. Go hard. The way you fix this is you call somebody random and say, hey, I know I asked you to buy this product or service and you didn't buy it, but I'm asking you again because I'm starting to feel like quitting and I just need to know that I'm doing something valuable. I'm going to ask you to buy. Mecca, the wife coach. Appreciate the love. Well, $10 super chat. Y'all are showing love out here, man. I appreciate it. The kids appreciate it. 
So understand me, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to feel that. And I want you to know that when you feel that, it's not that you're feeling this alone. Every entrepreneur is going through it. The hot seat, I felt, man, what, should I be doing this? Look at the comments. They're calling me a bully. They're saying that I'm only doing it for likes and engagement, and you're not really helping anybody. You're embarrassing people. Ugh. I'm reluctant to move forward. But that was the sign for me to drop another episode. Shouts out to King's Chamber. Shouts out to at King's Chambers GC. I would love to partner with high schools to teach barbering and entrepreneurship. So to you, come on, man. Freddie, you already know, bro. And so let, we we going to knock some stuff out ASAP. This summer, we're going to do summer classes, all that. I got you. Make sure I rock with that King's Chamber beard oil. All right? See that beard right there? See that? It was all gray, but I started using King's Chambers, and the black is starting to come back. <laughs> Rock with my boy King's Chambers. Gage Boardingham dropped a hundred dollars. Man, Gage Boardingham, we appreciate that, man. Got to drop some love every time I catch a live. You are going to listen, whatever you invested in these youth today on this live, that money is coming back to you a hundredfold, bro. And just I want you to send me a DM. When it comes back, you're like, yo, I didn't even know it was gonna come back like that. It's coming back. Because you have a heart to help, man. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. We now got to go to decision. We got to go into decision. We have to make a decision to keep moving forward. But as we make this decision, we have to embody this reluctancy, knowing <clears throat> that if we start to do something else, we're going to feel the same feeling. You're going to want to quit the new thing too. But don't ever stop engaging people. Don't ever stop evolving the idea. You got to stay excited when you start making this decision. Do I quit or do I, keep do I keep moving forward or do I quit? Do I try to get excited about something else? That cycle stops today. The cycle will stop today. Shouts out to Glorious for the $9.99. Continue to do it for the children. It takes a village. Make sure y'all, listen, go follow, send a DM to Miss Glorious. Make sure you send, send her a DM because she has a heart of gold and she's supporting the youth. Listen, y'all, this is the life cycle of a good idea. I want to see how I can assist you. Click the link that is a pin still. Let's pin that link in the chat. Um, you can call in live straight from your cell phone. You can just click that link. It'll ask you for your name. Come on. I need to see your beautiful faces, okay? I need to see your beautiful faces. Now, nah, just do the regular link, uh, Nella, the one from uh, Ecamm. But sometimes, depending on the browser or something like that, let's throw that. Let's pin it in, uh, in the chat. Join me live. If you're listening to this, you can go to Social Proof Hotline. Uh, dot com, but if you're in the chat, click that. So while we're doing that, Nella, talk to me. I, I need I need to know how you're feeling because you are on the grind as an entrepreneur yourself. Yes. Um, what's going on through your brain right now? Um, what's going on through my brain? So I am in this journey that I'm currently in. I am most definitely in. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I was told, what do I do? Uh, so I am a fractional COO. Um, and for me, in my current place, I am getting better in engagement. Mm -hmm. I very much get comfortable with working behind the scenes and just doing the work. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I have, J-Star is the one who tells people about me for me. Um, so for me... I have to get better with my own engagement um, because it's just very easy to just be behind the scenes, do the systems, do the processes for everybody and not and let them do the word of mouth referrals. Um, yeah. But in order to build to where I want to build, I know I have to put myself out there more. And what does that work look like? What does that engagement work look like? That engagement work looks like... Um, 
engaging my my um, contacts. I have a list of quite a few contacts, emails um, that I could directly, because a lot of times we think that we solely need to use social, uh, social media and Instagram and TikTok or whatever, um, but we don't own those platforms. Yeah. And so we can lose that, like we see what's going on with TikTok right now. Yep. We can lose that if we can lose that contact with those people. So for me, it's going to start with those who I directly have contact with. Good. Okay. Let's get to it. We got a caller. Mecca. Let's bring Mecca into the live. Come on up, Mecca. Uh, you got to turn your camera on, my sister. Oh, I got to turn on my Camera. I'm sorry. You said what? I have to turn on my camera and turn off this. Yeah, okay, here we go. Where is okay. my camera? There, there we go. There we go. How are you? I'm good in yourselves. I am blessed. I am blessed. How can I serve? Okay, so what you were talking about this morning it really hit home because all of the stages you're talking about, I've experienced, and I right now I feel as though that I'm in the decision, decision mode. Um, I'm great. I, I get excited. The idea I already have those things, um, like planned out is more so the an engagement have no problem with that. Um, but is the decision making when it, when things don't come about as far as like, you know, some people get excited, but then it fizzles out. And I feel as though that there's some things that I know that I, I haven't done that I could be, that I can do better as far as follow-ups um maybe surveying to see what people actually want because i feel as though that sometimes i give them what they want and then when i present it to them it's like crickets mm -hmm. you know and and i and i get frustrated um because the excitement is still there um i have a team that's working with me and they've seen my ups and my downs as far as just the emotional parts because what i do i feel as though i, I really feel it it's not just like an idea but i feel as though it's like connected with a purpose um and when it doesn't come out the way that i think that it should or people tell me what they want and it's they're not following up the way that they should and especially if it's in a, an affordable realm it just i i, I crash yeah. I crash to the point where I sometimes I've, I, I want to give up. And yes, I've done the cycle of, okay, this doesn't work. Let's try this. But like at this point, like I'm like three levels in, I'm like, I don't want to keep adding on to another decision only for it to go back into the same type of cycle. So what, this, what is this, your product? What is your product? I actually am um, a co I'm, is coaching. So I offer a service. So um, when you have mentioned my name is the co-wife coach um, where I um, work with women and educate and support women that are in poly relationships. So it's and there's and it's funny because there's a lot of people that actually have been my clients or want the service or I'm seeing more as poly relationships are becoming more like in light and, and, and relevant in this time where, where I'm, when I'm presenting it to them in a way where it's affordable to them, easy access as far as online, so on and so forth, it, it starts off great, but then it fizzles out. Got it. So, so you support people who are already in poly relationships on how to, yes. how to move and interact. Um, yes, how to move and interact as far as navigating with the emotional adjustings of it and also educating people that don't, that want to know more about it, like they're interested, but they're not sure what to actually go, you know, what, what direction to go through as far as when it comes to so, education. So tell me how you're supporting them. What is the service and how much does it cost? Okay, so when it comes to one-on-one -on -one service, I have packages as far as just for one starting at five, like four seventy five. Uh, then I have uh, monthly packages at eighteen hundred, and then I have group so packages. Hold on, the four seventy five includes what? Just one. Um, it it includes one one on one session for about sixty minutes. That also breaks down um a game plan of what it is that they're um, I'm sorry, what it is that they're looking to do as far as within their uh journey because everybody normally starts off with a discovery call. So that way, if they do move into sessions, I know how to kind of compile their their session to be 
um, beneficial for them in the long run, especially if they only do just one session. All right. So what is the outcome for me giving you 475? The outcome is you have a different perspective. If you start it off, especially with the women that start off coming in and they're emotional, they're broken. So I'm giving you $500 for a different perspective. Dif well, I guess a supportive perspective that's going to assist you with tools and resources that'll help you even after the session. So I'm giving you $500 to look at things differently. Yes to possibly help apply certain things in your life in a way where your outcome may be a little different within your, within your relationship, your marriage, or your, your potential marriage, that, depending on, you know, what, what uh, path that particular person is on as far as within that relationship. Okay. I think the challenge is right now that um, you don't, it, it's hard for you to, paint the picture of what the outcome looks like. You're telling them about the service, yeah. but people want an outcome. So a marriage counselor, you don't pay a marriage counselor to give you a different perspective. You pay a marriage counselor to stop fighting. Right. Like we're going to get together and we're going to figure out how to stop arguing and how to start loving each other again. Right. Because but people will pay to be able to love their partner again. Like they did yeah. when they first started. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. That's not what I'm getting from you right now. Okay. So that is, that is a part of it, but I'm only working with one person. I'm not working with a couple. So I'm only working with the women that are, that are the ones that are having the emotional um, issues. Cause the men, I don't, I, I've never been a man of Dana in, in, in my life. So I can't tell a man how he needs to function as far as within that relationship or even with the emotional parts, because my thing is helping them heal to be able to see whether this is something that's for them, that they want to work towards, or if it's not for them, how to possibly exit that type of relationship. Got it. I, but, I, I just don't, I don't, I just don't know how, valuable the service is just yet because I don't think it's packaged correctly. Now I tried, that was my first, right? The second thing that I did was group sessions, which is a little bit more affordable. Um, it's $29 a month. They're getting group, a uh, one group session, which is um, once a month, help once a month. They also have access to a member site where they have eBooks that I've written um, previous interviews and workshops like a whole package tool. Before of, we get into that, if you have a person that's dealing with a problem in their poly relationship. Yes. What is an outcome you can provide for them? Say that again. Well, I'm sorry. There's a person that's dealing with an issue in their poly relationship. Yes. What is an outcome that you can provide for them? to walk them through whatever the actual, to pinpoint the actual issue that they actually had. Okay. Um, so there are people who don't know the issue, but they will pay you to find the issue. But to, it seems like it would be challenging to find the issue if you can only talk to one of them because in a relationship, it's poly. It's like four, four, three or four or five people. So the, the issue may be me. Right. The issue may be the uh, the main person that I'm in a relationship with, but it could be one of the other ones that's saying something to another one. And I, I'm trying to understand how you're going to find the answers to a problem that involves five people by talking to one of them. Okay, so like, let me give you an example. An, an issue where it's three people involved, right? Say it's uh, a polygynous situation um, where there's two women and it's one man. And one of the women may have a problem with just the simple fact that the husband is taking on this 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 journey and she doesn't understand why so on and so forth she loves him she's invested you know time and has history with this person but she just doesn't understand this decision that he wants to make and but she doesn't want to leave the relationship and she needs more clarity understanding but talking to him it just is not making sense so she may reach out to me to help get a different perspective and outlook and possibly even game plan from a woman's perspective that has been in it for some time 
and we'll walk through the the process of what it is that the real issue is is it is it him is it polygyny is it that it's mirroring what's something polygyny else? what's that mean polygyny okay polygyny is when a man is married to more than one wife or more than one woman i thought i was polygamy no polygamy is when is a, a man having multiple wives or a woman having multiple husbands that's polygamy polygyny is a man having more than one wife Pol, uh polyandry you ain't just say that same thing twice no, no. polygamy and i know polygamy. i know the word is different but it seems like the definition is no it's like the root okay. of poly hold on, hold on all right so polygamy yes is a is man that's married to multiple women or a woman, or a that's, woman married that's married to multiple men. Yes. That's polygamy. Polygamy. And what's polygyn Polygyny is a, a man being married to more than one woman. Po polyandry is a woman being married to multiple men. And polyamory. Okay, so <laughs> polygamy, <laughs> polygamy is either or. Then yes. there's one that's with. Okay, so no offense, y'all. So gay means you like the same person. Yeah. Same the, sex. Yes. The same sex, right? Lesbian means woman, woman. Homosexual means man, man. But both of them. If we want to wrap it all in one thing, color. it's gay. Right. Okay, all right, I understand now. Okay. Yes. Yes. I was like, yo, you said the same thing twice. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. So here's here's what I'm going to share with you. Still none of the stuff that you're talking about is an outcome. Right. Here's what I would offer, though. Think about one woman, let's say, mm -hmm. that's with a man who has other wives. Right. What I would think that this one woman wants is a, a is a special, deeper relationship with the man. I may have a desire to be like that number one top person. That's the outcome. That's the outcome. That's that they what I'm talking about. Yes. And so that's the outcome that they 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 look to have and that we work towards. Because right now they're get they're so muddled up in not being able to see that far up they just see where they are emotionally like how could he do this why is this going on yes you know it, this feels like he's cheating he deceived me all of these all these different um emotions i i kind of help navigate them through the emotional turmoil yes in order yes for them what, I, what i'm saying is you didn't say that i'm sorry we're, we're talking in front of um a couple hundred people and you yeah. keep talking about um, helping them change their mindset when that's not the outcome. Okay. The outcome is you will have a deeper relationship. You will be that man's number one girl. He going to play with the other ones, but like you that deal, right? And she already said she's in it. You're, you're in it, right? How many y'all yeah. got? How many y'all got in y'all house? It's three, huh? it's three wives in total. I, we saw you in Philadelphia. It's three wives in total. Three wives and then the man. Yes, our husband. All right, on the on the low, real quick. Are you like number one? Are you? I am for chronological reasons. I am the first wife because we've been married for almost twenty eight years. Woo! Yes. And, and then when did we start introducing other women? Uh, a little over twenty years ago. So we've been in in poly, uh, in polygyny for about twenty one years. Like we're, we're real twenty eight. Yes, married 28 and been in polygyny for about 21. Yeah, but it was just you and him for seven, eight years. Yep, for about seven years. Mm -hmm. And so tell me about that first one. Like, how did the conversation start? Um, He comes from a polygynous family. So that was when we sat down and we were courting, he said that this may be a possibility for me. Is that something that you're open to? Hold on, you, you said he came home what? He he's he comes from a polygynous family. So his dad oh. had four wives. So when we were courting before we married, he said that this is this this may be possible for uh me. Is that something that may be problematic to you? Because you know, he kind of put that out 
on the table before we even got married. And what I saw based off of his family, I was like, this is great. Like, I mean, in a sense, as far as how everybody was getting along, I said, I mean, I'm open to talking about it and seeing what happens. And that's what we did for the, the course of the seven years. We talked about it. We had conversations. I've done my own research and so on and so forth. And um, yeah, and it, and it kind of came about where I kind of jokingly said, you know, when I thought I was going to be traveling abroad and going to school for some time that I was like, you want to meet another wife, you know, and I said it jokingly, but it came out so effortlessly and it wasn't like I wanted to take it back. And 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 maybe months later, we he said that, you know, if I do take on something like this, I want you to, you know, help me, you know, as far as finding the right person. And that's kind of how it started. Yeah. Before you had that situation, did y'all have like a menage boogie, like kind of? No, it's no menage. This is more so, this is heterosexual women. Like this is like, I don't have relationships with them. We all are married to the same man, but we have a sisterhood and friendship bonds. Where, oh, you so know, you, don't, you don't ever have physical? No. no. So it's never all of y'all in one situation? No, we all have our own homes. We all have our own cars, our own kids, but we all. You said you all have your own homes? Yes. I'll say y'all live thought... separate. Yes. Where do you live? We, oh, he, and like... he, just, he just rotates the houses? Yeah, we're like big love. We literally live on the same block. Nah, that's lit. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trey, I, I Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I try to no problems. But, but no, I, I I thought it was like yo all of y'all in one house everybody got the same energy. It's really just like I don't want to say that. It's really just like I have multiple women. women. Yes, why? But it's women. not all. And I'm I'm in my head. I'm thinking it's all like all one house. Like no, nobody's all in the same bed or you know so on and so forth. And if we were in the same house at one point, but the house was like over ten thousand square feet, so everybody still had their own separate spaces and so on and so forth. But that so, wasn't so, working out. That no, it worked. It worked. We just moved. Got it. Okay. All right. You need to talk more about outcomes. Yes. That needs to be the outcome. What you need to identify. What, what you need to start uh, putting out. So this is for everybody. There's two parts in a successful business. Mm -hmm. There's the person and the product. If we're not making money, one of these are off. Right. So your product might be good. But the way you're describing it, I'm not known as the person that helps this wife keep a very close connection to the man in this particular situation. Right. So I don't know how he, I'm sorry. So I said, that's the goal. But I guess like when I'm talking to the women is more so identifying with some of the emotional things that I know that they may be going through because I too went through my own emotional ups and downs. So it's not like, I, I mean, the outcome is something that I, I paint, you know, after I find out where is it that they actually, where they want to go. You know, what is their reasons for reaching out to me? And what are your goals at the end of the day? Do you want to work through this? If so, I can help you do this. Do you want to be able to, to, to have a clear understanding as to um, how you can connect better? You know, because a lot of the women disconnect. Um, but how you can connect better in a way that you've never connected with your your spouse, um, then I can do that as well. And I always and I also talk about my own situation because even though uh, um, we we have some time as far as not just in polygyny but marriage, I still like my husband. Like that's my homie, you know. And I and I and I and and I speak about that in some of my social media like videos and so on and so forth, and share that and even my lives. Um, but that is when I'm talking to them one on one, I try to get an understanding as to where it is that they want to go and how can I assist them okay. along. All right. So I'm telling you. Yes. There's a product and a person. Yes. You are the product might be cool. The service might be cool. But the biggest issue is how you're describing what you do. Because okay. we can't connect it. Nobody's paying. Nobody's paying for a different perspective. Right. So your branding and messaging needs to be about connection amongst the noise. And I'm not calling your sister's noise, but kind of. Right. 
Right. There needs to be a connection. Maybe it's not, maybe you don't want to be known as like, you're telling them, hey, I'm the number one. So, well, you are the number one in your situation, but I'm, I'm saying that, that everyone needs it if they're in this situation. How do I create this connection? Because it seems like I ain't seen my man in three weeks and he at your house pretty much every evening. Right. Even though that's not the case, but yes. It's not the case. I mean, but it could be. It could be for somebody else, absolutely. For sure. You think about one man married to three women, he might have a, he might have a favorite. Every time I go over to her house, she be wild I'm cool. Mm. Or this person makes me feel a certain way. So right. we need right. to figure out a way to create a connection amongst the noise. Okay. Guess who else this works for? A woman that's dating a man that there's not they're not exclusive. Mm. This okay. is Creating connection amongst the noise when this person is distracted by other options. Right. That's the way you need to brand yourself. There's nothing wrong with the product, I don't believe, if you're getting results. But it's you and your messaging and how you're posting it. So that's what you need to work on. How you're delivering the outcomes to your potential clients. Mm. Okay. Okay? Yes. All right, we got to keep working on it, okay? Join the morning meetup, too. It's an amazing I community. am. That's on my, net, my, my list. I thank you. Let's do it. All right, pleasure meeting you. Same here. This was a really good conversation. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Mecca. Next up, we have Ashley Amber. What's up, Ash? Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I need yeah, that camera. Yeah, come on camera. On. Oh, shoot. How do I do that? Uh... There's a button somewhere. There's definitely a button. I'm sorry, y'all. I have not. This is my first time on YouTube Live. Okay. Um, somebody, um, you know how to walk her through it? There's actually, when you came on, it should have oh, allowed I, you to like right. turn your Give camera her, on. She probably didn't get permission to take for the camera to oh, be really? used. No, I'm saying, like, when you came on, there was probably a little button. Look on your phone somewhere. There should be a little camera somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I'm tap the screen, maybe. I don't know if that matters. What's this up here? I feel it's like on. You can do this. It's a red. Uh, it's a red. Uh, camera. Touch that joint. Go on and touch that joint. Touch yeah, it. I did. I did. It didn't do anything. Okay. I don't. Wait, let me see. Let me take it out. All right, let's 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 get to uh, try to work that out. I'm gonna bring you back on right after this one, okay? Okay. You might need to, you might need to hang up and come back on because right on the in the beginning, it will ask you to do your camera. All right. All right let me I'm let me get the up. next one. One of the cameras on already. Okay. Next up, we have Keyshawn. What's up, Keyshawn? Hey, what's going on, Dave? What's up with your internet, fam? Can you hear me? Oh, no. It's all good. Go, go for it. What's your question? Yeah, so... i to turn him up a little bit. So, basically, I've been an author for, a, for about four years now. And I'm really wanting to move forward in expanding the, my latest book, ICU HBCU which centers around a little boy named Amon and his two parents. Amon finds out his parents have gone to an HBCU. And for those that don't know what that is, historically black college or university. And so he, he becomes inspired and wants to learn all about HBCUs. And eventually at the end of him and his parents learning about them, he says, okay, I want to now go to an HBCU. And so I've, I've had the book for two years. Um, and I haven't really been intentional about spreading it. Um, I really want to get into the schools, kind of like how you're doing right now. But just needing that, um, yeah, I don't know. I just haven't been intentional. Okay, so why aren't you being intentional? <sighs> yeah, I, I, I watch a lot of your content. I think part of it is being comfortable. I have a pretty good uh, full-time job right now. But, you know, despite going to this job, I still feel this yearning of uh, this, this mission, right, to teach kids about HBCUs. I look at the news and they talk about how black history and the teaching of it 
is being watered down in the public education system. And so knowing that, you know, I've gone to an HBCU, two of them, um, and understanding just the truth of black history that they hold, um, right? I, I see, the, I, I can see the impact that it could have on kids. It's just me doing this business. So, I mean, personnel could be a, a part of it as well bootstrapping it from the ground up so okay nah, good, good uh thank you for jumping on so yeah. the, part of the issue is maybe and somebody said it uh who said that um carpe diem said probably doesn't know where to start is that true in terms of getting in the schools yeah that's part of it um i mean i do a lot of research but uh you know they're there's a thousand ways to, to skin a cat. So I would say that's part of it, yeah. Okay. Um, you're the, who is the person that's going to buy this book? Target audience is or are families, particularly parents, who are interested in uh, having more of a direct hand in their kids' education. So yeah. not solely. Okay. Do you know any students. parents that have kids that would this book would help? Yes, I do. Okay. How many you think? How many you think you know? Off the top of off top of hand, at least twenty five to fifty. Okay. What I want you to do, you have the book already. Yeah, the book is out. It's on Amazon, um, and so I, I buy the books on Amazon. I distribute them to people. I could Good. drop a link in the, in the chat. What I want you to do is we are going to focus on an activity every day. I'm going to give you this activity, but before I give you the activity, I need you to promise me that you're going to do exactly what I tell you to do. I promise. You promise. Good. I want you to ask three parents every single day if they'd be willing to buy this book. Mm. Okay. This is going to take you about three weeks to get through all the people that you know. Three, four weeks. The first step is okay. asking your customer to buy your product. What this here's 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 the coolest part about what I'm asking you to do. Okay. I don't care whether they buy it or not. You understand? Yeah. I don't care if they buy it or not. It's I need you to get in the habit of asking your ideal customer to buy a product. Okay. So when we get off this live, I want you to call three of those parents and say, hey, uh, I have a business coach and I'm building out this book. You know, I have this book or you may not know, but this book is to help yeah. kids identify or push them into HBCUs or whatever. And I it's my assignment to ask three parents just like you to buy my book. So here goes. Would you like to buy this book that's going to help you accomplish this, this, and that? That's mm -hmm. all I want you to do. Through this activity, some people will buy, some people will not buy. But out of some of the people that you talk to, whether they buy or not, they have access to schools. and say They might read it and say, yo, this would be great. I think my friend's teacher needs to really go through this mm -hmm. it's the activity that builds a business there's two parts of a business the person and the product if your book product is good then all we have to work on is your ability to go ask somebody to buy this thing every day so i want yeah. you to contact three parents every day with the same pitch because if you're nervous to pitch i want you to blame it on me people will help you with an with a homework assignment. The yeah. homework assignment, I got this homework assignment, I got this coach, and he's forcing me. I don't want to do that. I don't want to call you and interrupt your day, but this coach is forcing me to call three parents every day and ask them to buy this book. Let me tell you about it. Will you let me pitch you? Yeah. I need no. three a day. In a month, I need you to come back and tell me the results if you were consistent. 
I yeah. promise you it leads to something. I appreciate that, Dave. How would you like to be uh, my first pitch today? Listen, the answer doesn't matter. Yes, go ahead, pitch me. Dave, I know you have uh, a child. How often does your child say uh, that they want to do something in life with conviction? Not a lot. Not a lot, okay. How often or how involved are you in your child's life in terms of their education? I'm there every day, baby. There every day, okay. What if I had a product for you and your child that would allow them to become more inspired to do more, to be more, while also learning more about a topic that uh, connects them to their roots? Mm. Sounds dope to me. Awesome. Well, the, the product I have for you, Dave, is a book by the name of ICU HBCU. And so the book centers around a little boy named Amon and him and his family. Uh, he basically learns about HBCUs from his parents. And through that learning, he becomes more inspired uh, to do more uh, as, in terms of being in school. And he also learns alongside his family what it means to uh, go after a dream. Does that interest you? Yeah, it does, actually. Awesome. Well, just to give you some more logistical information, the book is only $15. And uh, if you provide some contact info, I can definitely get you a signed copy. Oh, dope. Okay. Yeah, just send me your, uh, your website. Cool. Will do. Is that it? That's it. Failed. You failed. <laughs> Talk to me. Let's debrief. You did ask me to buy it. <laughs> Repeat after me. Repeat after me. You ready? Uh, I'm ready. Will. Will. You. You. Buy. Buy. My. My book. Book. If you Dang. lead with the send me your information, I'll send you some information. You're never gonna get a sale. You talk all around it, but you never say, I need you to make a decision. Will you buy this right now? I'm about to send you this link. You could buy it Dang, right will now. You buy the book? I'm in your front, I'm in your face. Will you buy it right now? Okay, so it doesn't count if you tell right. somebody about it every day. I need you to ask three people to buy it every day. Right. So. Gotcha. Be direct. Dave, will you yes. buy this book? No, I'm good. My answer is no. What's your hesitation? Your answer I just no. don't want to buy it. Noted. Well, as, as an aside, I'll still send you a free copy. Thanks. Bro. You're supposed to ask him why, Appreciate man. You're supposed to ask him why, man. He didn't fail well, necessarily. Because well, no, well, he did ask me. The assignment is aside. to ask. And, and I'm telling you no because I want you to know what it feels like when they say no. And guess what? The world didn't end. Some people are going to say, yeah. no, I'm cool right now. Cool. Some people will say yes. You understand? For sure. That's where you start, okay? I appreciate now that. do that Thanks two so more much. times today, okay? Will do. All right, cool. Thank you. So thank you so much, Deshaun. Right. Next up we have, I'm so sorry if I don't pronounce this correctly, Jobin. Hey, man. We, you I need, y'all have to have your camera on. Go to Nayada. That's the one camera. We're going to the people we see their camera on. All right, Nayada. Girl, what's up? What up? Hey, My dog hey, right hey. So I think I'm in the engagement stage to where I need to um, tell more. And I've been, I've, you've been on me and I've been listening. Um, Nella's been on me and I've been listening. Um, I've been posting more. Um, I've been, Come into the I've center of your like, screen a little more. I'm sorry. I'm in a garage. The kids came from the park and they're sleeping in the car and I'm not getting out. Perfect. That's good. <laughs> 
You broke up. Oh, you froze on me. You froze on me. Fractional COO told me I need to eat, breathe, and sleep this community and talking about it. However, I... Dad, you're breaking up bad, sis. I'll tell you what she's about to say. Get out the garage. Get out the garage and call back. Okay. All right, no, I, maybe I, we'll go to the, let's go to the next one. Ain't nobody got a camera on? You're in the garage. Oh, okay. Sorry. Are you good? You, you're good now, I believe. Okay. Did you hear what I said? Nope. I need to sit. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, so I was saying pretty much I, I launched my community, Moms That Play, um, today to the public. I did it last night to the webinar, and I'm just... <laughs> Thank you. And I'm just trying to figure out how to like really push it and drive it within the window that I need to probably run the community. What's the outcome? The outcome is that you, so it's for stay at home moms with little ones under five. So the outcome is you no longer struggle and stress about how to teach your little ones at home, how to keep them engaged, how to um, keep them excited about learning at home, um, how to get them out on field trips to get them socializing and get you out the house as well. Yeah. So you, it takes the guesswork out of figuring out what curriculum to use and how to teach them and so that they're meeting their developmental goals. Good. I think what you have on your side is you have a strong, strong word of mouth um, program because once mothers get in, it's like, yo, it really helps. Like you got my kids outside and it's, it's incredible. So do you have a group of people that you're going to pitch to outside of your Instagram? Besides my email list? No. Okay. So we're going to utilize the email list for sure. We're going to blast it out starting with a bunch of uh, helpful topic tips and say, oh, I just launched a community where we are going to help each other together. Okay. Okay. Second, we will use Instagram. We, we want to like start going on a campaign of helpful tips and you need to ask my wife to repost it. Like, yo, if you, if you like this, make sure you share it. Obviously y'all have that relationship. So you ask the people that you know to reshare it especially if it's a really, really good one that, that parents would uh, benefit from. That's another okay. way. The next way is as people come in, if you're having a problem getting people in, you need to find some parents that maybe have some influence and help them. Have them join the community. Just reach out. Okay, so, so how does that look like if the program, say the program starts on a certain date and it ends on a certain date. So, um... Like, I don't have people trickling in at, uh, every day. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a when, start. When does it start? Like April 17th. Okay. April Wednesday. 17th. Do you have any commitments already? I have one possible. Um, I don't know if she registered, but she committed to it last night. How much is it? But it's um for the webinar last night. It was 197 but that was only last night. Now it's 197 for 12 weeks. Oh, it was 97 before, last night. It was only for the webinar. Yes, it was only for the people on the webinar. Oh, how many people were on the webinar? Uh, Five, I believe. And nobody bought? Not last night, no. She made a commitment, but she didn't um, push the button. Okay. So maybe it's our presentation we got to work on. Um, okay. Or whatever that offering is. So... Um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a longer conversation that I probably need to have with you. But um, you need to start reaching out to some of the parents and ask them, ask them to be a part. Even if you don't get anybody to pay, maybe you have some uh, a beta group. Because now you can start getting the testimonials and start selling the testimonials. Okay. Because, I mean, we're, we're starting, we got a couple of days. So let's start reaching out. Try to get them to buy. If they don't buy, a day later, say, yo, I want you to be a part of this beta group. Just so we okay. can start getting the, ac the, the, um, the activity and start getting this word of mouth. Because I know, I mean, I talk about you all the time. 
You know what I mean? I know. I appreciate you for that. Absolutely. So maybe um, uh, ask my wife if she'd be willing to do a live with you. I think she'd do it. Okay. I was gonna say that's a lot for her, but I'll ask her. <laughs> I know it's a lot. Now, I'm about I'm about to go home and be with the babies anyway, so it's really a lot on me. Because <laughs> I'd have to be on live while she does it. But oh yeah, so yeah, ex explain to people what you do again. I'm sorry, I'm Nayetta the mom. You got ah, uh, it broke up, man. You breaking up? Oh, she breaking up. Fully grasp the concept of what you're trying to teach them in a hands-on way. We miss all of that. Ah! Try it again. Okay. okay, sorry. I'm Nayetta, the mom playologist. I help teach stay-at-home moms how to engage with their little ones in a fun and playful way using our play framework. You can find me on the activityplayhouse.com. Love it. Love it. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll put some strategy together, especially we'll talk in the morning meetup too, and we'll figure out how we can help you, okay? But just, okay, now now, we still got to do the activity. Gotta... All the moms that you know, you need to reach out to them and ask them individually. That's going to be some of the work for today. I can do that. I can do Let's that. Let's get it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, no problem at all. Let's get it. All right. Um. All right. So, listen, I actually do have to go pick up my daughter. So We got one more. Are they on? She's on. And she's Let's do ready. It. All right, Ashley. She finally got it. You Ashley, were in. figured it out. <laughs> Hi, how are you guys doing today again? Good. How are you? I'm wonderful. So, um, David, I think my biggest issue is like growth. So I feel like I do a great job of Can you slide to your left a little bit? Yes. There we perfect. Perfect. Okay, go for it. All right, so I feel like my biggest issue is growth. Like, I'm not really sure where to go next. Like, I feel like I've done a great job of knowing how to go out there and get money, make sales, but it's the growing of my business part. So I do social media, like I'm a social media strategist um, and coach. So what that means is basically I help small businesses create content that drives traffic and sales to them so i go if there's two parts the first part is for my people who they're pretty established they you know they just don't have the time they have money but they don't have time we go out we create the content for them we um come up with a plan uh, for them to post it and either i post it or they post it whichever plan they select and then I do coaching where I teach small business owners who they don't have the money, but they have the time to learn how to go about this thing strategically. Okay. And um, I feel like I have a pretty, you know, good system going, but something's missing because I feel like it's doing great in my area. Like people in my area know who I am. I, you know, get invited to do a lot of stuff like I have made a name for myself. But outside of that, like, I have no brand awareness. Like, I could not go, say, to Atlanta and have an event and it be successful because nobody there really knows me or go to wherever. And so I'm really struggling with how to build that brand awareness outside of where I live. Got it. Besides. I think there's a perfect example because somebody just said, didn't somebody say, like, yo, oh, post her website? Or was it, they talking about Nayetta? Um, you have to figure out, I mean, you're a social media strategist, so you understand how to get in front of an audience, right? But Absolutely. the problem is we never put that type of thought into our own business. Yep. So it's almost like you got to put yourself in your client seat to say if somebody, if I came to you and I said, hey, Ash, I, I, I'm trying to build my following of people. So if I go to this new city, I want to grow. You're not going to tell them, hey, well, I can't help you. You're not going to say that. Right. I don't you focus on though, just to throw say it again. I don't focus on. So my focus is not giving you a big following. My focus is giving you people who are actually going to 
investing in. They're going to actually buy. They're going to actually engage. So quality people. So it's not really so much of, oh, I'm going to get you a million followers by this time. It's I'm going to make help you make this much money by this time online. Yeah, but OK, so if I have an audience of people, if I don't have an audience of people, how am I going to make money online? OK, so I don't this is the thing. I don't really I've never even worked with anybody with zero following. Most of the people that I work with, they already have they already have an online presence of some sort or they may have built it up and they just don't have the time anymore. I come in and help you with content marketing that's going to help you spread your wings online. And then those people who go through coaching, those are people who more, you know, they're trying to step into social media. So mm -hmm. I would never be saying what you're saying right now. Okay. So because you are connected with people who already have a following and you've helped them make money, correct? You need to start to highlight that and have other people give you testimonials. Yeah. You need to start pairing yourself with the people who have a following. Oh, I see Ashley with her. I see Ashley with him. I see Ashley with that influencer. You need to start closely aligning yourself with the people who already have a following. The name of the game is getting in the way of other people's traffic. Yeah. So if you're helping somebody make some money, I'm sure they're going to show you some love and shout you out or whatever, but you got to be willing to ask for that. For sure. If you are the person that t takes people who have a following into making money, those people will refer you to other people who have a following. And the, the person that you get referred to say a part of the package is you got to like, really I'm, I'm, I'm growing my following by helping you make money. This is a, a mutualistic relationship. Okay. So you need to start connecting with whatever city you're in. You need to start connecting with the people who have a following because they have a problem. They need money. You have a problem. You need an audience. I need to work together on that. And you come up with a strategic plan to make it beneficial to them. Gotcha. Okay. You got yeah. it. Okay. Get out of your own way. You're smart. You, you, everything that I told you is nothing that you haven't thought of. You're right. You're right. I, I definitely tend to get in my own way when it comes to stuff like that because it's so easy nowadays to, like, I never want to come off as the person who wants to use somebody to get ahead or, you know, I I really Well, they're trying to come off as using you to make some money. How does that, how does well, that make you feel? They're not using me, though, because they're paying me. That, that's my job. That's my job. You're paying them by getting them some money. <laughs> okay. If you're adding one caveat in that, then they, they in the moment they want to go make they want to make the money, so they're gonna say yes to whatever. Okay. You understand? I got you. A vulner a, a way. Never mind. I'm not gonna say that. No, I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing you it. You gotta say it now. You gotta say it now. Um. A woman can get a man to say anything they want them to say at the right time. Okay. When they want something. Now, it's a bad opportunity to ask after they got what they want. So let's think about somebody that's, let's just say they are um, abstinent. Right. And this person loves this person. And a woman says, I need to be I want to be married. It's a it's a a better chance that the that man actually strongly considers it if we are like we're in a good relationship and we haven't done any we haven't gotten the physical part and we haven't gotten none of that wifely stuff. Mm -hmm. Ask the person at that point, they I'm committed, you know what? I want to get you should come to church with me. All right, bet, let's go. I right. want you to get closer to God. Come on with it. I want to be married. They'll move a lot faster. Now, if you give that man everything that they want, they move their feet really, really slow because they got what they wanted already. So that's why I'm saying you need to have these conversations before you provide the service. Okay. 
Right. Okay. It's not in a bad. It's, you you got to do it in a very tactful way. Say, hey, I'm going to help you with this. Um, but one of my challenges is I'm trying to grow my following. So is there a way that you can help me do that as I'm helping you do this? And maybe I'll give you a discount because that might mean more to you than the money that you're taking off of their service. Absolutely. Listen, I'm not even going to tell you. This makes so much sense, and it, I have not not heard this before. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, it's just something that stops me in that moment, you know, from saying, hey, I want you to shout me out from time to time. Hey, can you do this for me? Or I don't know. Like, I just in my own way that's really all i can really say look reach out to some of the people that you've helped make money today and say mm -hmm. yo i'll run another campaign for you but i have uh, this is something i'm working on i will be willing to help you at an extreme discount um if you help me build out my following by exposing me to your audience let's see they might say yes they might say no but the people that say yes let's run the play okay i'm gonna run cool. the play i'm doing cool. what's, what's your instagram so everybody can follow you it's at it's Ashley Amber. So literally, it's I T S Ashley Amber. Look, make sure y'all follow. All right. Thanks for jumping on. Thank you so much. Oh uh, no problem. Yo, Bye. I gotta go. I gotta go get my daughter. So I would love to do another one, but I can't. Why y'all just jump on earlier? You said what? I can't do it. I gotta go. I gotta get my daughter. Um, why is Ashley still on there? Oh. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Look, John, I, I want to get you on, man, but I just can't. Um, but I got to go. Listen to me, y'all. There is something special happening in your life, but it's going to be two things we need to look at, the product or the person. Either the product isn't as good as you think it is, or you need to work on your ability to present it, to market it, to give it to people, how you say it. Like we talked about it earlier, the young lady, she wasn't good at talking about the outcome of the thing. So we absolutely love you, man. Thank you all for joining this conversation. July 4th and 5th, we got something really, really big coming up. We have the biggest, most electrifying content creator conference in the world coming up July 4th and 5th. It is called Podcast Summit. I want you to go to Podcast Summit dot com podcast summit dot com and we are going to um take your business and blow that business up through the power of content creation if you are stuck in your business it's probably because you don't know how to create the right content in a long form way you cannot build trust with your audience with 60 to 90 second clips. However, if you knew how to build out a strong podcast, you would build an amazing sticky audience that will buy from you on a regular basis. This is the outcome. You come to Podcast Summit. At Podcast Summit, you'll understand how to create content, how to really lock in on your audience, how to make it beautiful, how to make it look good coming across the screen, the psychology behind it, the philosophy behind it, building the business, how to position your business with a podcast. And after you leave this summit, you will go out in 2x, 3x, even 10x your business, your income, your brand. It is imperative that you come to Podcast Summit. So go to podcastsummit.com. Use code 20 social proof. I want to say the code is 20 social proof and you will get 20% off today only. But we're going to give you, we're going to show you a quick little cre recap of last year's podcast summit. And then after that, I want you to go to podcastsummit.com and get your ticket, secure your spot. Um, I want to say we are about 40%, 30, 30%. Sold out, and we got two and a half months left. This event will sell out. Trust me. All right, so go to podcastsummit.com. Uh, thank you so much, Nella, J Star, Reese on the ones and twos, and everybody that <laughs> called in. We will be right back here next Friday for free smoke. Let's get it. We got a video for you. <laughs> Summit. That's what we're doing. This is one of those events that if you miss, you actually miss something.
Everybody knows media is taking over and David Shares is leading the front. It isn't just about building a podcast and finding your message. It, it's about truly leveraging the power of podcasts that create, don't wait. Everyone here is a content creator or emerging content creator or aspiring content creator. And we have learned the tools necessary to create our own work. I think it's a lot of people that's interested in register with it. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, we're not tripping on general. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if if I, sure. I told them, hey, look, if they're not on it, we'll double check. If we got to add it. I want everyone logged yeah. so we know what the final number is. Yeah. I'm really just tripping off of, you know, the VIP masterminds. Yeah. We have a certain limits for all those. Yeah. The preparation for the podcast summit was grueling. Providing this experience for creators of color, the sun, the vibes, the feel of Miami, it was all worth it. We do have a limit on all stars. There's a certain amount of people we can feed. Well, we don't have a limit anymore. Because we have oh, the bigger yeah, the room. Bigger room yeah. yeah, we'll just have to pay for it. Got it. Yeah. So you technically could still sell all right. Star Masterminds or have people upgrade. What do we deliver to a broad audience of people who are in the podcasting space? I came here to learn more about branding and how to expand it into a podcast. Some people are interested in podcasts and they're coming to find out how they can finally launch this podcast that's in their head. So I'm also here to learn about how I can monetize my podcast that I'm looking to launch in September and protect my brand legally. But there's another group of people who have been podcasting for days, have no idea what they're doing. It's not growing. They're not getting more views. They're not getting more downloads. I want to learn how to monetize. I want to learn how to grow. I just want to learn how to, like, I guess, engage with the people more. I'm just a mom who just wanted to do something crazy. <laughs> But you're holding it intentionally so there's more energy outside. Correct. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, do, do your thing, man. Uh, how, how, if, if we're behind, how do we make up for it? Or we just push everything back a little bit? I think there are breaks that can, uh, that will naturally adjust. Got it. And okay. get us back on track. Yeah. What's the lobby looking like? Is it busy? Are they out there? Did they show up? So once I got out on the stage, I looked out and I saw a packed room on a Sunday. I was just energized. I was really just blown away because now I know that the people here were about to feed. You see it? You see it? Y'all see it? Do you see it? In the back, do y'all see it? Can y'all feel it? Do y'all know it? Your life is going to change in the next 12 months. Let me tell you about something I've never seen before. I've never actually seen a podcast booth set up for creatives to create in real time. So I'm talking about networking on steroids. You just met somebody in the room. You want to actually have a quick little interview or a quick little meeting. You could take them into one of the booths, ask them all the questions you really want to ask them in real time, record and document that, and actually put that content out right now. I've never seen that before. It's crazy. Get where you need to get. So how would I show up? Don't be Andre. Camera was shaking during the podcast interview, so we got to figure something out. I think when you're looking at production of anything, you should always be looking at it from a pessimistic perspective. What can I do to improve? What can I do to make this thing better? It might be the smallest change. People aren't looking at what's wrong. You could record a whole episode and there's a trash can behind you that nobody sees because nobody's looking at what's wrong. They're only looking at, oh, this is a good shot. You know, that's the one thing you can't hide during a live event. You know what I mean? Like, Say I launch a book. You don't know how many I sold. You know what I mean? Say I launch a t-shirt brand. Hey, get the shirt. I can be like, yo, it's popping. People are buying a shirt. Almost sold out. But a live event, like, if nobody's there, everybody knows that nobody's there. One of my biggest takeaways from the podcast summit so far was like an aha moment first when Donnie said, don't edit. I was like, mind blown because i'll be doing the most with trying to edit my podcast and stuff i actually launched my podcast yesterday and then i got to actually experience the content room and i got to film some episodes for my podcast i have been able to network from the moment i got off my plane thank you guys so much for the podcast summit this has been an amazing experience and this is just day one who believes they have a seven figure podcast inside of them It sounds good. It sounds real good. Get pen and paper out. Let's get to work. Me and my partner, Donnie, made it all for more on the entrepreneurial side where you can have us as business partners. David gets 
really nervous about like asking for the money he gets excited about a product he wants to do it all the time oh yeah 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 we're gonna do this do this do this but when it's time to ask for the money he gets scared and it's all on me what's up it's Rashad one half of Earn Your Leisure I'm at the podcast summit right now my boy David Shans put it together and um you know, it's very important that we have this kind of dialogue because there's no blueprint, there's no college course to actually learn how to, you know, be a superstar in a new age of media. So these type of formats, these type of programs are extremely important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been oh. wanting to create. I've always yeah. wanted to be on that. But it's the, it's the consistency part yep. when shit ain't working so yep. it's stuck. Yeah, yeah. So when you well, that's what we're here about to say. You don't know if it's not working. That's the problem. So like I said, when we was doing Thank God It's Monday, we had 50 people watching. Was it working or not? I don't It was. We just didn't see the evidence till later. Okay. What's faith? The substance. Things hope for and never seen. So if you got faith that it's going to work, as long as you know, listen, I say this. If you can get five people to listen, you can get 10. If you can get 10, you can get 50. If you can get 50, you can get 200. You see what I'm saying? Like. If, if you got people right, and so a lot of people get caught up because they don't got the big numbers and they ain't got the huge following. Right. Keep, stay consistent with the content. But, yeah, like you said, we don't want to box her in. I mean, we can have them place and then just quickly from like here, right here, after they sit. That works. That works. We are um, setting up the set for the Babbitts. Um, she is interviewing a surprise celebrity guest. Well, Rick Ross isn't coming anymore. We were supposed to be Trina's guests. So now we're trying to find another celebrity that's in Miami that'll come and interview. I am about to interview Trina. This was not originally a part of the program. There are some things that I'm going to ask her about stuff that I don't know about. The woes of uh, doing something good. And we were running on time the whole time. So there's one issue. I guess I don't need to talk about that too much. But I mean, it's a part of the game, you know? If I'm being honest, ma'am, the highlight of the conference for me was the testimonials. I mean, you, do, you put all this time and energy into an event. You're like, yo, did everybody have a good time? Was everyone pleased or are they going to cancel me Monday morning? And the testimonials, the, the tears, the rave reviews. And it wasn't me. It was the fact that they got a, a gumbo of information that was tailored toward them. So the biggest thing I got yesterday was learning how to reach out to sponsors, getting the correct pitch deck going, and also when it comes to branding and making sure that whenever you're pushing yourself on YouTube that you have a good thumbnail and a good description. One thing that I learned that I'm going to implement immediately is one, make sure all my operations are in order, two, thinking about branding, specifically what Mario talked about of like what brands can you actually work with and what does that look like to actually get sponsorship. The podcast summit in two days transformed my life and it just opened my mind as to how far I can go with my podcast, any pivots that I may need to make or any rebranding that I need to make. So we're just going bigger. We're just going bigger. We're just going bigger.